Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. This is the second pour of the property development series within the playlist. The first video was the first half of this driveway pour. Now we're doing the second half. So in the first video, you can see the grading, the compacting, the form setting. This one, we're just gonna pretty much do wire installation and the concrete pour itself. So this is a little bit shortened version of the first one. Also, we're gonna show a little patchwork, how to patch your concrete if, it, if you get a chip in it. That's with, within this video as well. Here's the dowels going in. You can see how fresh that concrete is that I'm drilling. So I'm being very careful. Well, it drills easy. <laughs> That's nice. And if I drill too high or too low, it's gonna actually break a chunk of the concrete out. So I'm taking this pretty slow because it is so green, the concrete. And I'm drilling these every four feet. So that's about all the dowels I'm doing. I'm doing a half inch hole and I'm using three eighths uh, rebar for my dowels. So they will be slip dowels basically. So it allows the slabs to move a little bit, but the height would remain the same for the most part. What? Here's the wire mesh going Checks in. This out. is a 10 gauge wire mesh. Ugh. What you will find at um, your local <laughs> Home Depot's Lowe's typically in a roll at those places, but I got flat sheets, much, much easier to handle. And it was less expensive, which is what caught me off guard. I figured the um, flat sheets would be more than the rolls at Home Depot, but they're about, you know, a little, about 25% less. Here's the concrete truck, s, s out of Bullhead, Arizona. This is one of their brand new trucks. This thing's got all the bells and whistles on it, man. I took a look at this cab. And man, it looked like I was sitting in a um, space capsule or something with all the controls in there, fully automated. So as uh, the truck pours this out, you notice there's no sheet, man, which is nice. We just gotta focus on laying it down and not worry about uh, getting it in there. What I like to do is hand float the edges first, and then I run the screw. That prevents a lot of excess material going Pull it back. on the outside of your port. There you, go, you can baby. get it close on your edges to start with. It, Here's there Eric the chef. Ball. You notice he has a little treat behind his ear. You know my time lapse camera went down. You know, luckily I had my head cam, I would have no footage at all, but I didn't have time to go check it during the um, pouring process. Here's some of that struggle using steel flat stakes and this type of terrain. However, since this job, I actually stopped in Las Vegas during the World of Concrete, and I went to uh, Concrete Accessories, and I got some steel stakes. Very reasonable ones. Um, they're, uh, they're round stakes, so they go into the ground much easier when you're dealing with a lot of rock, rocky ground. And this is a 3500 PSI and it's kind of, a, it's a blend. So I've got pea gravel and big rock mixed into this. Notice how that come along really moves a lot of material quickly. Here's your four foot red stick from Milwaukee. Nice to catch those tight areas. I put some plastic on the concrete, the, um, the first pour, if you notice that black, that's a six mil, which is left over from you know, a vapor barrier for underneath foundation, so I just threw it down there. Whenever you're running out of a chute, you're gonna get a lot more splattering than out of a pump. So it's a good idea to run plastic when you're chute pouring. Also, it gives us a place to walk without having to worry about cleaning our boots. Here's Eric, the chef on Big Blue. He's got that tool down now. Here I am running the funny trowel. Doug ran the walking edge, and I'm just knocking out his line and I will be saw cutting this. I've already cut the first pour, so I'll just continue those lines on through. That particular truck has a capacity of 13 yards. This was 11 yards of concrete here. Here's your six inch wide half inch hand edger, followed up with your four and a half by 12 trowel. That particular trowel is a Marshalltown brand. Probably the um, best type of trowels you can get. Now that we've pulled the plastic back, we can really get down making sure that 
that both elevations meet flush. It's hard to see it when the plastic's there, so now you can really um, get a good view. Also, we will be running the rock and roller around the perimeter, which is a stamp. It's going to give us a simulated stone look for about 14 inches wide around the um, outside edge. Here's a funny trial here. We will be running the Milwaukee battery power, power trial on this as well. But we've got this thing in really great shape right now. I mean, we could do it by hand if we wanted to. But I really like this uh, battery power, power trial, so I'm going to use it. So I took the power trial out there a little early when it was a little too wet to run, but it's just sitting there on a pan. Once it gets right, then I'll fire it up. There's Doug on the roller knocking in those stone, the stone border. Eric was spraying the liquid release. Notice my pan is not perfectly centered on the blades. I don't know if that matters. It seemed, seemed to work fine. So with the MX Fuel Milwaukee Power Trial, this thing will do about 800 square feet, four passes. That's what I've determined through my test on these uh, two 11-yard pours. Now here's Doug on the power trial. You turn them down a little? Yeah. They're popping rocks. It's kind of weird because it's so long. Right in this area here. You can see where some of the tops of those stones didn't get texture, where the roller didn't make contact. So I'm just going to um, touch it up and then clean up the joints with a roller, roller joiner. Later on, I'm going to come back to this video and reference it in, an, in a walkthrough after I stain the perimeter and seal everything. So as I do the texture, madam, Spraying some more liquid release on there. Eric's behind me, touching up the joints as I hand, hand texture all the way through. After we got this all poured out, um, it rained for about three days after this. The very next day, it started raining. And it's been raining, uh, we've probably gotten about six days of rain within the last three weeks out here in Fort Mojave, Arizona. And so it's really cured out this concrete. Really, It's really great for the concrete. It's gonna be uh, extra hard, you could say, because it's been water cured. Now the trick is to try to power child right up to the edge of that border without, without disturbing it. And you can see I'm getting pretty close. The blades aren't hitting everywhere along that border, but almost. But this MX Fuel Milwaukee Power Trial so so precision made that it allows me to work the edge without any hand work. Take a look at this. Right up against the border without closing up that joint. Can't get in that corner though. I wish I could, so I gotta actually break out the hand trowel. You know, I was thinking, what kind of pattern can I do? Because this is gonna be the finish. I'm not gonna broom it, and I'm not gonna hard trowel it. I'm just gonna leave a little peach fuzz on top from the machine, and that's gonna make it a non slip surface and my finished product. And I was thinking, should I do a pattern? with this or um, just kind of go with it and it is what it is and yeah. I just instead of fighting and try a pattern I just kind of randomly hit it this looks like it's pretty much near the final pass all right guys I'm out here on the day after the pour stripping some forms Ran into a little bit of a problem, nothing major, however. But as I strip this form out, and now so what I'm going to show you is how to patch concrete now. Right here, see that? What it was is uh, I had nails going through for this header form that split the two pores. And uh, I didn't pull the nails out, so they were in the concrete. So when I lifted this up, it just knocked that chunk out. 
here it is right here here's that piece and see how it fits oh not bad I could glue that back in actually and then just patch it up could do that or I can just put a whole new patch in I'm gonna use this high performance cement it's a uh, fast set rapid rapid repair order vertical or overhead structural repair extend for full depth repair 28 days 6,000 psi that should do the trick they shake it up a little bit I'm gonna need a margin trowel for this and I like to use a paintbrush if I got one Also, I do have some glue, some concrete glue. Doesn't really call for it, but if you got it, might as well use it. Concrete bonding adhesive. Also, it's an acrylic fortifier, so you can mix it with the concrete as well. Or patch. First step is cleaning the area, getting the loose material off of here. Because this is the very next day of the break, it's gonna adhere really well. Just pour that on like that. I really don't want it to adhere to the first pour because there could there will be movement between here. Because my doweling, I actually use slip dowels, so allow for a little movement there. Now throw some of this in here. I've already got the water in there. Probably too much water, which means I gotta use a lot more material to get it right. Kind of like using it again, actually. Put a little cream on there, like so. Just let that dry a little bit and we'll shape it up in a minute but i've reused the same piece so all i've got to do now is sponge it off so i'm just leaving the material you know in the in between the two pieces so it's not going to be that obvious and it'll, this piece should be cure out the exact same as everything else since it's the original we'll just wait sponge off the excess that's a done deal. Right, about 30 minutes later, this is probably just a little wet, but let's check it out anyway. Let's see what we can do here. Ooh, it's starting to sprinkle right now. It's starting to feel that rain coming down on me. Let me just clean the surface of this off. There's one of my little fake lines right there. Fake stone lines, clean that out. Yep, that should do the trick. It's not perfect, but it's gonna work. Well, yeah, that wraps up patchwork. All right, it's saw cut time. I have my wife, Jana, out here to help me uh, with the chalk line. And I'm just pulling it right off the existing cuts that I made in uh, part one of this series. And I had to make two more um, lines the other direction. Once they're all snapped out, I'll get the Medusa. As you can see here and roll it across cutting about one inch deep and you notice how I use blue chalk that's important because if you use uh, there's some colors that you could use this uh, red is one of them that won't come off it's a permanent stain basically whereas blue comes off pretty easily I did have, I had one puddle on the first pour. It was probably not even an eighth of an inch deep, maybe. It took about two hours to evaporate, I would say. And then I also had another puddle in the second pour. Same thing about the same size puddle, same amount of time for evaporation. So it wasn't too bad. And there are only about, oh, four by four areas. But this is a relatively flat piece of a piece of concrete, and that's what you want if you're going to be doing any kind of sports on it. Like I have plans for this, you know, I'm going to be doing some different things on here. So this is ideal. Here's what it looks like when it's all said and done. We got 22 yards of concrete in here, wire mesh, nice cuts, good concrete from SNS. Anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit the notification button. That way you'll be notified as soon as we pop the next video. Have a good day.